What's up? This is Paula from Afford Anything, and today I'm going to answer a question from Carly, who wants to buy a second home and, well, I'll let her tell you. Hello, hello. I have a question about buying a second home. I own a townhouse. It has increased about $100,000. It is my primary home. I've had it for three years. And so what I want to do is use this home as a rental, rent it out on probably a yearly basis or even do some longer short-term stays, such as one to three months. Then I want to buy a second home and have that be my primary home. My question is, is I could technically perhaps do an FHA loan for three and a half percent down. I'm self-employed and had to get a special business loan for the home I have now. With that, I showed one year of business tax returns and I put 10% down. Is it better to take out, say, a fifth of the equity, use that in addition with maybe 5% of the amount to put down on the home? Or should I leave the equity where it's at in the house, don't touch it, and try to save more so that I can buy a home and put say three and a half to 10% down. Thank you very much. Carly, first of all, congratulations. The value of your townhouse increased by $100,000 in the last three years. Huge congrats to you for, um, wow, what a, what a treasure. Um, so that's a fantastic question. Should you tap into one fifth of the equity that is in your primary residence plus uh, add it to some cash that you've got from savings and use that combined to make a down payment on your next home? Or should you leave the equity alone and wait a bit longer? So a couple of things come to mind right away. Now, first of all, you mentioned that you got a special loan for your your current home. Uh, and in order to get that special loan, you needed to show one year of business tax returns and put 10% down. The the special business loan. So uh, uh, that's awesome that you have it. I don't know when you started your business. Uh, you will be able once you once you have two years worth of self employed tax returns. You will be able to qualify for, with most lenders, most major banks or and credit unions will allow you to get the same type of financing, the same type of home loans that any salaried W-2 employee gets as soon as you have two years of tax returns from your self-employment. So I don't know how long you were self-employed prior to when you bought your current home. It sounds as though you might have been self-employed only for one year, which means that you had to get a kind of a special loan. But you've been in that current, you, you've been in your current home for three years now, which means that certainly you have three, four years three or four years at least of self-employed tax returns. And um, what that means is that most lenders will be able to give you the same type of loan that they'll give to any W-2 employee. Um, the way that your income is going to be calculated is they will look at your last two years of tax returns and they'll look at your monthly income. And then that monthly income added up, um, your monthly income added up and then divided by 24. That will be your, considered your monthly income for mortgage-related purposes. So yeah, the reason they do that is, of course, if you're a W-2 employee, you make the same amount every month. I'm sorry, I'm saying this for the sake of everybody else who's listening, who kind of wants to understand how the system works. If you're a W-2 employee, you make the same amount every month, right? If you're self-employed, you might make $5,000 in January, $9,000 in February, $17,000 in March, $2,000 in April, right? Your income could be all over the board. Uh, and so what they do is they'll take your income from the past 24 months as documented on your tax returns. They add all of that up together. They divide that by 24. And that number is considered your income and your monthly income, right? And then based on that monthly income, they calculate 
how much they would be willing to give you for a mortgage payment based on what's called your front end ratio and your back end ratio. Your front end ratio is the percentage of your monthly income that you would spend on principal interest taxes and insurance, in other words, your mortgage. Plus, if there's an HOA involved, that's included as well. So that's the front end ratio. Uh, and then the back end ratio is the percentage of your income that you spend on all debts combined, including your mortgage. So if you have student loans, credit card debt, car loan, uh, the back end ratio is how much of your total income can go towards all debts. So um, that's how they calculate your monthly income. And, and from that, calculate your front end and back end ratios. And from that, determine how much of a loan that they are willing to give you. So all of that being said, uh, you should be able to go through the normal mortgage channels now since you have two years of self-employed tax returns. All right. <laughs> um, now, with all of that established, let's talk about the best way to buy a second home and then convert your primary residence into a rental. If you were to tap into the equity on your current home, likely the way that you would do that, I mean, there are, there are a few ways you could do that. You could get a home equity line of credit or you could do a cash out refi. Um, you know, th there are a few different loan options. Let's assume that you, you know what? I don't, I'm just going to say, I don't like the idea of getting a cash out refinance because the interest rate that you locked in three years ago is going to be way lower than the interest rate that you could get now. So if you have a low, I mean, if you got this home three years ago, necessarily the interest rate that you have locked in is going to be a lot lower than whatever you could get today. And if you get a cash out refi, you're going to be giving out, giving up that interest rate. So I don't like the idea of a cash out refi for that reason. Um, so let's knock that off the table. If a cash out refi is off the table, your other option would be a home equity loan or a home equity line of credit, something that does not close out your existing mortgage. But if you've got a home equity line of credit, I mean, that's a revolving loan. So loans are either installment or revolving. An installment loan is something that you pay periodically, uh, like a mortgage, right? Or a car loan, right? These are installment loans. You have a fixed monthly payment. A revolving loan, by contrast, is something where you don't have a fixed monthly payment. It's a, like a credit card, for example. With a credit card, you have just an open line of credit. And then you pay a different amount every month, depending on how much of that open line of credit you've used. A home equity line of credit is a revolving line of credit where you, you have a, an open line of credit and then you kind of you pay whatever, depending on how much of that you've tapped. That kind of revolving line of credit is designed to be a short term loan. There are some real estate investors who kind of use it as a de facto supplemental down payment. I've never been a huge fan of that because it's designed to be a short-term loan. It is a revolving line of credit. If you were to take the HELOC approach and, and use a revolving line of credit to supplement the down payment that you want to uh, put down, I would prioritize, I mean, I'm not against it. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I'm not against it. If you were to do that, I would prioritize paying off that home equity line of credit as fast as possible. So in the hierarchy of debts that you want to pay off, I would close out that revolving line of credit, that home equity uh, line of credit, as fast as you possibly can. Because it is, it is by its nature, by its structure, it is designed to be a short-term loan in the way that credit cards are designed technically to be a short-term loan. Um, so, but, you know, I've typically I've never been a fan of HELOCs, but if you've got, if you've locked in interest rates from three years ago, you don't want to give that up. So you don't want to cash out refi. Um, the negative part of getting, a, uh, the other negative part of getting a HELOC is that you then have three loans going, right? You've got the loan on your primary residence, then you've also got a HELOC, and then you would also have an FHA loan on the second home. Um, that's not, a, again, that's not a terrible thing. You, you know, fine. You have three loans for a little while. Again, you prioritize paying off the HELOC. That becomes the first debt that you really like focus on. And then, Eventually, you, you get that paid off, and now you've got only two loans, the FHA loan on the second home and the mortgage that already exists on the, the first home. 
yeah, I mean, as I, as I talk through it, I don't have any major objection to the idea of getting that HELOC and, and combining that with some cash from savings in order to come up with a down payment that would get you into that second home. Yeah, I, I don't have any problem with that plan. Uh, I would just prioritize um, paying, you know, paying off that HELOC first. Uh, first and fast, if you were to do that. So yeah, I think that's a good, I think that's a great approach. I don't really have a strong preference between doing that versus waiting to save up the down payment. I mean, I almost feel like, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other, like you're, if you're getting an FHA loan, you're going to be putting, you're going to be eligible to put down a very, very small down payment anyway. And so the down payment that you're going to be putting down on the second loan, this on the loan for your second home, should be not that big of an amount, which means it should be relatively easy, relatively quick to either save up the cash or take out a HELOC and then pay it off fast. That's the reason that I don't have a strong preference between the two options, because Either way, this seems to me, unless, unless there's some math that I'm absolutely missing here, this seems to me like one way or the other, you should be able to have either of these options done in less than a year. Like either it should take you less than a year to save up the rest of the down payment and just make that down payment in cash for an FHA loan or get the HELOC combine it with some cash, get the FHA loan, get that second home, pay off the HELOC. That entire process should take about, I don't see any reason for it to take longer than a year because I don't see any reason for the HELOC to be a very large amount. That's the reason I don't have a strong preference between the two. So either way, I think I like the plan. I love FHA loans. I think they're a fantastic vehicle for uh, owner occupants. So um huge, huge supporter of taking out an FHA loan. Uh, that will enable you to make a relatively small down payment, which kind of renders, which renders the basic decision, you know, uh, like, do you take out this additional loan for the down payment or not, kind of renders that to be in the long term relatively insignificant. Uh, just whatever you do, don't cash out refi the, the primary residence. Keep that mortgage for as long as you can. So cool. All right. That's uh, that's my answer. Congrats on, again, again, congrats on the primary residence and on now converting that into a rental property. Um, this is this has clearly been a huge net worth boon for you. So con big congratulations to you for the $100,000 in equity that you've grown, for now getting into your first rental property, um, for expanding your property portfolio. All of this is fantastic. I love to see wealth grow in this way. So congrats, Carly. 